Yeah, because it was like blurry. Hello. Hi. I'm Micah. I'm Tiff. And we are Margate and Binturon. And in this video, we're going to show you how to make one of these. A oh, sorry, rain cloud sun catcher. Tiff, who's this video for? Um. This video is for complete beginners who want to learn a little bit about wire wrap or just how to make sun catchers in general. This is the fourth in a series of videos we're making uh, based around our sun catcher kits. And we're gonna cover how to make links, uh, make drops, and other types of techniques that you can use for making wire wrap jewelry. In the future, we'll be making other bonus videos. If you are subscribed in the link down below, you will be notified automatically. If you'd like to subscribe, hit that subscribe button, ring the bell, and like the video. Please. Thanks, you guys. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Have fun making. All right, so when you get your craft kit, you should have a cute little uh, rain cloud frame here two bundles of wire, one thicker to make the dangly raindrops and one thinner one to wrap your colored crystals onto the cloud. And then one of these three color schemes here. The rainbow one's pretty crazy because every single crystal is pretty much a different color, <laughs> a different shade. So pretty insane. Um, so that's Micah's favorite, of course. So my favorite is this one. Sometimes when you get some really dank or like serious rain storm clouds, they almost look kind of purple. So I thought it would be cool to have a purple to sort of uh, aqua colored because when the, sign, the, when the sun shines through the cloud color, it sort of gets lighter on around the edges. And then this is a very classic, cute, traditional rain cloud color scheme. So it's light blue and it gets really dark and gray and mysterious in the middle. So. Which, whichever one you pick, all the steps would be the same. I would recommend putting all of your loose components here in a dish just so that you don't, you know, drop anything or if you accidentally hit the table, your stuff doesn't go flying. So you should have five total raindrops, two blue ones and three clear ones. You should have five segments of chain. They're all different lengths and we're going to go, we're going to go through and decide our layout in a moment. Um, and you should have a, a bunch of various sized little crystals that we are going to wrap along the outside of the rain cloud to be kind of like the silver lining. It's going to be on these outer crevices here. And you have a brass ring. And there's a long chain that came in the main bag and that is for the top. It's going to connect to the top of the cloud for you to hang with a hook or something. We are going to decide and plan our layout. So I would just kind of lay your beads out and decide if you want your blue ones on the edge and maybe clear ones in the middle. Um, and then you can go ahead and grab your chain sections here and they're all different lengths so you can see which ones fit better. I think I like the blue ones in the middle. I mean not quite the middle but kind of alternating like so. So I like I want one to be longer and there is one longer chain here so I'm going to put this longer one there. I like the way that looks. Let's put a short one here. Okay. And then, let's see, that one looks Are any of the same a little length? longer. Not really, actually. We kind of cut them all a little bit different. So I'll put that one there. I think I want this end one to be a short one, too. Um, if it's hard to handle, you can use your chain nose pliers nice, with a nice point and just kind of straighten them out like that. That one will go in the middle. Okay, I think I like that. So next we are going to mark a spot for, so that we know where these go after we're ready to wrap them on. So you can take a Sharpie marker if you want, um, or if you don't have a Sharpie marker nearby, you can just scratch some marks in there. Which by the way, I forgot to mention, if you get our kit with the pliers, <laughs> you will have uh, chain nose pliers, which are these here. They're kind of flat on the inside and they have a nice point. Uh, you'll have round nose pliers to make loops and 
some wire cutters. So we're going to take these round nose pliers because they're nice and pointy. And then you can just kind of scratch, scratch a mark. So if you don't have Sharpie marker, just do this. It won't be visible once we wrap all kinds of, once there's all kinds of intricate stuff going on. So, okay. So now we're going to move the cloud for now and then let's unwrap some of our thicker wire here. This is 22 gauge wire. When you unwrap this, just be careful that uh, you don't poke yourself. Wire can be quite pokey, uh, especially these really thin pieces. They can go in your finger pretty easily. So, And then when you open this up, you don't want to just start pulling here because you can get a kink like that. You want to kind of slowly undo all of these loops and just pull it straight like so. All right, so we're going to work with this whole length. That's just my style of working. I like to kind of waste as little as possible. Okay, so let's just for the video purposes, I'm going to move these aside. Uh, I think if you're working at home, you might want to put them somewhere out of the way too, because the chain tends to whip around and you don't want to lose your pieces. So. So just put them somewhere and kind of keep them in the same order that's not in your direct work area. Okay, so we're gonna show you how to make a head pin. This is just a little termination point for the little teardrop. So you're gonna take your chain nose pliers. You are going to make to use the very tip and make the tiniest little bend there. I'm actually gonna zoom in a little bit. I guess I can't, that's it. <laughs> okay. Um, and then you're going to squeeze that tiny little section closed to make a nub and you're going to, uh, you're going to put your nub kind of deep inside your pliers and give it a good squeeze just to harden it. So it stays in place. And then we are going to put the teardrop with the round part. Do you want to show the nub what it looks like now? Oh, sure. Nub. I guess it's. Kind of far away. You can keep looking up if you want. Really? Yeah. It'll focus. Okay. There's the nub. So you're going to put the teardrop, the main uh, wider part of the teardrop, uh, facing the nub, and then we are going to we're going to show you how to make a loop right now. So a chain link. Wait, right, sorry. So you're going to move up a little bit. You don't want to go right up against the teardrop, but you want to go down a little bit. Maybe like if you use your pliers to measure, like maybe the middle of your pliers, um, go down that far. So we're going to make a right angle just like that. And you have a little bit of space because we're going to wrap the, uh, are you watching to see if I'm in chat? Okay. <laughs> and then uh, you want to similarly, you could use the middle, this middle range of your pliers to measure the two, two barrels, the, the both jaws of your pliers, maybe move that much down this length here and we're going to grip and do a half turn or like a partial turn and you should have something like that and then we're going to reposition our pliers kind of slide them in to wherever they fit and then you're going to take your hands and just pull the wire around to complete the circle and before we close this loop we are going to take that first chain segment and thread it through just have it bring it all the way down and then grab the chain and just pull it through the opening there, just like that. You're going to take your chain nose pliers and you want to brace this loop by crossing over and uh, getting both parts of the circle into your pliers. So. You don't want to just grip one side here because then when you start doing stuff, the loop is just going to be turning, moving around, wiggling about. Um, also, you don't want to crush this chain link onto your circle either. And you don't want to crush this area where the wires cross over. Maybe hold it closer. You don't want to smash that part because they'll actually cut into each other and you'll compromise the, your loop. There. Thank you. Um, so let's, you can take your, since you have all this length to work with, it's pretty easy to use your hands, but generally you 
want to avoid using your hands too much, especially with shorter pieces of wire because your hands will get really tired and your fingers will get sore. So. Show me your fingers. Oh no, my hands are all ugly and calloused. <laughs> ugly. Um, calloused. Okay, so once you, so you're gonna wrap, 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 and then get down to the crystal here. Once you get down to the crystal, it's gonna be a really subtle change of direction where you're gonna try and overlap and start moving the wrap upwards. So here we go, we're going up, up and up and away. And then once you get really close to your pliers there, we are going to cut. And then when I cut, See if you can see that. I usually go like halfway into the the width of the barrel of that coil I just made. So there should be a little little nub sticking out, and we are going to oops, wrong pliers. Take our chain nose and just kind of push that into the barrel of that coil. Hopefully that was visible. You know, my grandma told me to look out for girls that have burns on their forearms. Oh, really? Because they cook a lot? Yeah. <laughs> they, they bake, they put their arms in the oven, and the, the rack oh, would wow. bring their arms. Interesting. So if we ever have kids, I'm going to tell them to look out for, <laughs> look out for girls with calluses on their hands. Uh, a bunch of poke marks from wire. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you should have something like that. Your first raindrop. So let's move on to the next rain, raindrop. So for my layout, I had this one next. The steps are going to be totally the same. So no matter what your raindrop layout is, we're going to follow the same thing. So we're going to repeat making a head pin. So we're going to make a little nub. So start with the very tip of your round nose pliers and make a tiny, tiny, oops, got stuck there. Make a tiny, tiny turn and you're going to squeeze that a little bit so that it meets up and then crush it. Crush it in your pliers. Okay. So that'll harden the metal and keep it in place. So we're gonna thread the teardrop with the wide, wide portion of the drop facing the head pin, as we call it. And then just make sure these larger teardrops do have bigger drill holes. So just make sure it uh, keeps it locked in place. If this turns out to be, if your nub turns out to be too small, just grab your little nub there with your chain nose pliers and then start turning the wire like that and then readjust and turn again. And now you have a bigger little head pin. So it'll definitely stay in place now, so yay. Okay, so we're gonna do the same thing. So you're going to move up a little bit, maybe that far and then we are going to go down a little bit as well and do a half turn and you should have something like that and then complete the turn with your hand so before we close this loop don't forget to grab your corresponding next piece of chain and then just pull that through that's a really fun sensation and sound <laughs> So we're going to reach across the loop without crushing the link or this, this crossover section. So just kind of try and wiggle that into the center there. And then we are going to wrap, wrap, wrap. So keep going down until it seems like you're pretty snug up against that teardrop. And then just subtle movement, start going upwards. And then once you reach this point, it is time to cut and tuck. So we're going to cut just enough so that it's maybe halfway into that barrel there. Take your chain nose pliers and then oops, tuck right there. Yay, all right. Now you have one big luscious raindrop. So that is two raindrops now. We are going to move on to the third raindrop. In my layout, the third raindrop was this clear one. Okay, so another head pin. We're gonna make a tiny little turn there. We're gonna squeeze that closed and then crush that in the chain nose pliers. We're gonna thread the teardrop through with the bottom of the teardrop 
against the nub. If your wire gets kinked up and the teardrop is having trouble moving, just try and straighten it by really holding your fingers tight and then pulling, pulling across. And then make sure it doesn't go through, it's locked in place. And then we're going to give, us, give ourselves a little room to make a wire wrap. We're gonna make that right angle. We're gonna move down a little bit and then make a half turn. So it should be looking like that. Reposition your pliers. You're gonna go across to complete the circle. The circle of life. <laughs> Cut. <laughs> and, then, uh, <laughs> and then we're gonna, <laughs> the circle of wire, sorry. Uh, okay, and then put your chain through. <laughs> Mm. I'm going to refuse to edit that. <laughs> and then uh, grip, brace your loop, and start wrap, wrap, wrapping. Wrap, Oop. wrap. Um, please exercise care when you are wrapping and stuff because the wire can whip around and, you know, flick things around and on the table or also just hit you in the face. That's definitely something a uh, you know something to just uh, pay attention to so we're gonna cut and tuck here just like we have been doing all right and now we have our third raindrop woohoo next raindrop is for me going to be this bigger one I have my corresponding wire so segment, you say for me uh, chain saying, segment you're saying that their their setup might be different Right. Yes, you can arrange your raindrops however you like. Um, that's just the way I liked, but you know, all the chains are different lengths, so you can just kind of play around um, and do whatever. You could even forget the order and just work on putting them on chains. True. If you are uh, an agent of chaos, you can <laughs> totally randomize and Indeed. just go with the flow and yeah. Whatever happens, happens. Or what if they're really calm? It would be the eye of the storm. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's cute. <laughs> um, okay, so just make sure these uh, big raindrop or teardrops, they have big holes. So just make sure it really catches there and stays in place. And if not, we can do that, lar you know, the bigger head pin we did. So the same steps. You're going to give yourself a little bit of room. Uh, we're going to move down a little bit, do a half turn. I, for some reason, always end up using the middle of my pliers to make loops. But um, if you have beginner pliers like this that are really kind of thick, these chain nose pliers, you could even make the loops, you could go down. So the bigger, wherever you place the wire is going to be the size of your loop. So if you go all the way to the base of the pliers here, I don't even know if I was in shot for that. Oh, but, sorry, I was busy um, looking at pliers. <laughs> but uh, you can have a bigger loop and then that way when you need to brace it, uh, it's easier to brace. These are the fancy Dancy, seventy dollar pliers, or however much they cost. Yeah, these are uh, the pro pliers are a little bit pretty more nice narrow. pliers. Yeah. Also, these are really dangerous because I have stabbed myself, and it's like, <laughs> very uncomfortable to have something this thick go into your skin. <laughs> it kind of makes you cringe. Um, yeah, so you can do bigger loops like that. It really depends on the placement of your pliers. So if you want bigger whole loops to have an easier time when you are bracing with the other pliers, just go all the way down to the base. And if you want tiny loops, um, if you're making like earrings or things like that, you could go to the tip. But these chain nose pliers make it a little bit hard to work with tiny loops like that. So, okay, so we're gonna slip our chain in. Doink! That's such a fun little sound and sensation. Let me know in the comments if you guys also enjoy that sensation <laughs> of the chain slipping through. Okay, um, so once uh, you get to the teardrop, start moving your wrapping upwards until you get pretty much up to your pliers. We're going to snip about halfway the, into the width of that barrel of the coil, and then we're gonna we're gonna tuck that the end. Oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> All right, almost done with the raindrops. Wow, good job of mentioning the comments, by the way. <laughs> yeah. I'm still getting the hang of, we're still getting the hang of YouTube. 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 Um, okay, so we're gonna make that tiny nub. 
And we're going to squeeze the nub closed, or just not closed, but you know, together, and crush it. Uh, and then <laughs> <laughs> put that, uh, put the bottom of the teardrop facing the nub. Make sure it holds by testing it. And then we're going to make a, give ourselves a little bit of room and make that right angle. And then go down a little bit, make a half turn. Oh yeah, sorry. And then reposition your pliers, bring the wire around to complete the circle and thread that last chain segment, whoopsie, last chain segment through. And here, let's see if I can make this here, if you could hear this. Was that a nice noise? <laughs> I don't know. I tried to hold it next to the mic. Oh. Hey, but it's, it's a nice sensation. There's something about the thing snapping in. It just feels gratifying. All right. So, wrap, wrap, wrap. Uh, sorry, I might have done that a little bit fast. I know that uh, a lot of beginners might be I kind of thought you were making out. these a little fast, but... Let us know in the comments <laughs> if... Uh, what? Let us know in the comments if you think yeah, I'm going to if uh, I need to slow down. I forgot to mention also, because um, some people who are doing this might not be beginners. They might just like your designs or whatever. So um, they can play it on fast forward too. You can control the speed on YouTube. True. You can use that pause Oops. button, you know, oh, yeah. or hit the space bar if you want to slow it down. Okay. Or you can even slow it at quarter speed or whatever, right? Yeah, that's true. Um, I always watch tutorials fast. Yeah, me too. <laughs> okay, so we have our drops ready, and then we have our positions marked. So we are going to start. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Maybe keep these in order if you care. But if you don't, you know, just jumble them all together. And or if you're just watching the video and you want to watch it all the way through, put it on like four times, two times fast, and then just like let it play. Just hear us talk like chipmunks. And, but, it doesn't do that on YouTube. It, really? It, yeah, it, it tries to keep your voice sounding the same. Oh, neato. You never notice that when you're, quote, watching not. tutorials really fast? <laughs> <laughs> I'm all, get to the point! Okay, so when you unwrap this, be careful, as I said, no pokey pokey. Uh, also, be if you see how this is crossed over here, I don't know if you can see it, but just be mindful uh, while you're unwrapping this so that it doesn't get all tangled. That's not fun. Um, and then just... Kind of make sure. Wow, this one, it is kind of looped into itself. That's weird. How did that happen? Did I wrap that one? I don't know. I don't think so. It just happened. Okay, so just remember, don't just start pulling because you want to avoid kinks. Uh, kinks in really thin wire like this. Actually, kinks in any metal wire is probably not good. It makes it really hard and brittle. And then if you manipulate it too much after that, it could break. This is what Mike is working on on the side. <laughs> it's a lot better with the okay. expensive pliers. All right. <laughs> so um, you can, for where to start your wrapping, you can, actually, you know what? We're going to start with the silver lining first because when we wrap the crystals on, we're going to also simultaneously wrap the raindrops and we don't want all these dangling things on when we still have to do these top segments. So. You're going to take your crystal beads, these clear ones. This is the silver lining. Uh, and the, for these, you can also kind of play around with the placement. So I like to fill up this big crevice right here with... You can follow your printout that has the life-size photo of this also and just do it that way. Or you can kind of experiment. Um, I like to pair one middle crystal that's bigger and then two smaller ones on the sides. So there are two four millimeter ones and one six millimeter one. So you can uh, switch things around how you like. Have fun, play. So I'm going to see what this looks like. So you put that like that. I think that looks cute. You might want to pause this if you end up uh, playing around a little bit and figuring out your design. Um, let's see what that looks like. Like that. Hmm. I think I like the bigger crystal in this larger crevice there. So we're going to keep it like that. Okay, so once you kind of have that planned out, we're going to start with these three. So we can move the others back into our little bowl or dish. 
And now that we know we're using these, I'm gonna move them kind of away from my direct work area so they don't get whipped all over the place and get lost on the floor or carpet if you have that. Okay, so to begin, start by, I usually start like underneath or through the, the frame and then I will kind of hold it in place there and then fold around. And then I'll go around one time. So now it's kind of, you've got this long, little extra leverage here with the segment. And then I'll usually kind of tuck that around and then I will wrap around one more time. Once you have a couple wraps, it's pretty on there. So you can just start working with this end. Just be careful because the shorter thin wire gets, the more needle-like it becomes. So it gets very stabby. Um, so if you're scared of stabbing yourself, just use your chain nose pliers and wrap around like that. And if, if your wraps get kind of far apart like that, you can use your fingers or you can use the pliers and squeeze them together. So they're nice and, you know, neat and tidy. But if you don't mind, uh, you don't have to do that. Oh, sorry. Was I in shot? Sorry. <laughs> I wasn't watching. Sorry. Um, okay, so once you get a little nub like that, we're just going to press. You want to really press it down again. So sometimes I'll press and then I'll rotate. If you press and rotate, oopsie, sorry, it tucks. So it's nice and, uh, you know, smooth. There's no really pokey edge there. Does anyone remember Gumby? <laughs> Every time I say pokey, I think of Gumby. Really? I, 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 Wait, the, isn't the horse's name Gumby? No, the, no, the horse's name is Pokey. I'm sorry, the, uh, what did I just say? I'm tired. <laughs> I meant to say, isn't the horse's name Gum, uh, Pokey? I just said it again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, That's funny. Uh, I, I oh my gosh, I, I forgot to narrate. Sorry. Um, so you're going to put the crystal, <laughs> the four millimeter crystal on, if you chose to do this layout here. Just put the crystal on. And then this is a bicone. So if you see the shape of the crystal, it's kind of like a, like a diamond shape. So it has flat edges. So you want to, if you can, try and line up the flat face of the crystal against the frame. And once you have it can lined you up. Can show that to them again really quick? Oh, sorry. There you go. Uh, so you're going to try and line up. Flat face. So what helps is if I have the wire facing, pointing mostly up. And then... Um, Sorry, uh, we're my, Mike is cali oh. calibrating my <laughs> arm position. So I have the wire kind of facing upwards, and then I just kind of angle it down until the flat edge of the crystal faces the frame, and then I'll hold it in place with my thumb and my, I'll just grasp the entire area. And then just pull this wire down, so now it is facing, the flat edge is against the frame. And then I will pull this through and then hook around from behind and come back over. And then we are going to, thank you. There you go. We're going to. All right. So once we did one full wrap like that, uh, we're going to take the larger crystal. Last video, you got the bicone on the edge and the angle perfectly. It was like awesome. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So we're well. going to put that in the center there. And the same thing, so you're going to go through the frame and then just pull straight up and then come back and use and just push the, the wire through the frame like that. So we wrap this way. Oh, thanks. <laughs> so we wrap this way just to keep the tension on the wire. It's a little different from sewing. You don't want to thread the wire through with the tip first because then it gets all kinky and weird. Oh wait, that sounded weird when I said that. It gets kinked up. <laughs> Let's talk about Gumby. <laughs> no pokey. Yeah. Kinky and weird. Uh, been, uh, kinky and wired. I've been uh, thinking also as a pokey. Okay. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, okay, so we're going to do the same thing here. Sorry, sorry to interrupt. We're going to line up the flat edge of the bicone. Once you get it in a good position, hold it in place and through it. Put, press, press the wire through and then go around by pulling up and then come back around. And then we're going to go through again. And then once we're on the other side, actually we can end it right here. 
just to keep it simple. We're going to end it here and then we will be attaching the chain later. So we're going to do, I like to do four or five wraps just to make sure it's really secure and then you can snip it on that back side there. And then just tuck and then you're going to press down and kind of rotate so that it's uh, nice and smooth, no sharp edges there. Can you show that in slow-mo again? Uh, I mean, just show the motion with the player. Oh, okay. I was like, do you want me to talk in slow-mo? I was like, you're going to... <laughs> <laughs> um, so, you're... Okay, let me just pretend that that nub is back out. Right there. Okay. Right. So, after you snip it, there's like a little nub right there. You're going to grasp... And then while you have a little bit of pressure, you're going to rotate. Cool. So that will make it kind of smooth. So it doesn't poke you. You know, for the past four weeks, I've been thinking Gumby every time you said pokey, and I didn't even know that was You didn't was mention? On, no, I, was, I didn't know it was on your, on your radar. Oh, yeah. I watched Gumby a lot when I was uh, younger. Did you watch Gumby? It was kind of making a, like, when I went to school, it was kind of making a comeback from being popular in the 60s, and it was, like, kind of campy, and kids would wear Gumby shirts and think they were cool. Like, you know, in middle well, school I mean, and stuff. Well, I mean, the claymation thing was pretty cool back then. <laughs> I mean, claymation is kind of cool. All right. So once you have done this wrap, we are going to tuck that with the same thing. So you're just going to apply some pressure to that nub sticking out and rotate. And it should be nice and smooth. Okay. I usually will start maybe that far away. And if you need to adjust like this was kind of far away earlier, you can just kind of push it in. So there, nice and snug, like a family. Okay, so we're gonna take one of these smaller crystals, and thread that through. The police in my town adopted a thing that said Gumby says no. <laughs> For drugs? Yeah, Gumby says just no to drugs. I Gumby think, dares I think you just said no. Gumby said no. I don't know, I, I think you were just supposed to imply to whatever that, you know, apply to whatever you want. Like, Todd, have you know. done your book report? <laughs> Gumby, like, says, Gumby no. says no. But Gumby can walk into any book <laughs> with his pony pal. Yeah. We're going to take this four millimeter, which is slightly bigger. These tiny crystals are three millimeter. So we're going to take this four millimeter one, and we're going to kind of get it in the crevice. As you can see, it is a little bit spaced far away, so we're going to scoot that. Yay! And then we are going to... So just pull down here. This is a round one, so you don't have to worry about a flat edge. And then go around, we're gonna push the wire through, and then come back around the other side. Grab another three millimeter crystal. Okay. Nowadays you couldn't use a Gumby sticker in your police, uh, you know, in your police thing. It would be good, like a copyright restriction or something. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, no, I don't think so. Probably, even if it's um, All right, so make sure you line up the flat edge of that bicone against your frame. I'll go back to making wire squiggles, sorry. <laughs> Imagine if the police got copy striked or whatever. Yeah. Um, all right, so we're gonna do like four or five wraps Ooh. here. Thanks, sorry, everybody. <laughs> I keep going out of shot, okay. So, luckily, Mike is here to correct me. It's my, kind of, it's kind of my job, but... So, we'll once you have that nub, we're going to just kind of lightly put the pliers on and rotate. We're going to get a DVD cable, uh, a DVI, what is it, D HDMI cable and a monitor pretty quick. So that way we can hook it up to a little monitor, you can look at the screen. We're going to level up. Okay, so let's start maybe somewhere here. So, same thing, give yourself a little leverage with some short length and then Hold it against the frame, pull so, around, and you know, push the wire through. It's more like experience points, not like right. oh. And then pull it through one more time. Okay. Then we have that little length there. Start using your pliers so that the uh, so you don't hurt yourself. Okay. And then once you have that little nub, that's a dangerous, you know, definitely be careful there. Um, you are going to just press and then rotate, and you might have to change position and then do the same motion. Yee. Okay, grabbing another three millimeter 
crystal, thread that through, and then make sure to line up the flat edge there, and then hold it in place, pull straight through, and then wrap, go around the other side, and then push it through again, and pull through. We're gonna come back up and put the next crystal, this four millimeter one, Yours might be different, depends on how whatever layout you decided on. So it looks a little bit spaced out there, so let's push that together. Um, and then you're going to pull through and then go back up and around, and then go through, up and around. All right, so I like to do one complete wrap so to me, one complete wrap would be two, I don't know if you can see, but two little wire pieces there. Um, and then that's, for me, what I view as a complete wrap. And then that's when I know to move, move on to the next crystal. So we're going to line up the flat edge there. Um, it's not the end of the world if you can't line up the flat edge, but the, these bicone shapes have a pointed rim around the sides and if you position them so that the point is against the frame when you start wrapping it might chip and it's not the end of the world if it chips it'll still be sparkly but you don't you want to probably avoid tiny glass pieces just floating around okay so we're going to snip all right and we're going to tuck so oh, it looks like i got to change position here there we go. Just a tiny motion. Yay! So now we are done with our silver lining. Let us begin. So this is gonna be interesting because sometimes it's easy to just get so zen uh, doing all the wrapping and then you're like down here and you're like, oh crap, I forgot to put on the raindrops. <laughs> so let's do this and try and remember. remember. Did I do the thing? I did the thing. Okay, what's the thing? I forgot to put the raindrop. Okay. So I'm probably going to start here, which is around where the picture is going to show. And start kind of high up. So you're going to do the same thing. You're going to tuck. Um, I like to reposition and hold, move the frame around however you need. So I'm going to hold it upside down here. And you're going to start with that fold. And then you're going to push the wire through and then pull it all the way through. And then we're going to wrap twice before we start tucking that end, just to make sure it's nice and secure. So we're going to wrap. So uh, a lot of times, if you're new to jewelry making or wire working, you might want to use your fingers because it feels weird to use your pliers as like an extension of your hand. But that's how you will either scratch, you know, or poke yourself or just get you know, f finger cramps or things like that. So you'll get used to it. I know it feels really weird at first, especially when you have a plier in each hand and you're doing stuff that feels extra weird. Okay, bead strand. So we are going to leave this in the original order. So put it somewhere safe in between, you know, pulling the, the crystals off. Um, so you can do it with the purple side on the left if you want in my picture and in the original design, I had, I guess it doesn't really matter, but I had the, the turquoise side on the left. So we're going to pull this open. These are small crystals, so uh, when you pull it open, there might be like a little kink in the wire. Just try and get close and see if you can straighten it out there. But also avoid pulling, don't pull too hard this way because this is not a hard stop for the strand. It could just flick open and then all your beads will come shooting out the other end. So don't pull too hard like this. Um, so it's a gentle little movement. Okay, so now that we have this open, we're gonna pull the first bead, put it somewhere safe so that they don't get knocked over and out of, out of order because there are a lot of really subtle shades there. So I'm gonna thread that through. Or they could be Lords of Chaos. That's true. You could just mix it up, actually. I don't know what that would look like. I'm so obsessed with ombre or gradient color schemes. I can't stop. Somebody stop me. Help. <laughs> but yeah, actually, it might be fun if you just like to play around. Are you saying that 
This rainbow one is a cry for help. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. How many uh, different bags of beads did you have to buy this? Oh gosh. Um, I don't know. Maybe like twenty five here, you count while I do this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> tell well, tell us. Inform inform myself I, as I, well as I'm the viewer. I'm not going to enable your Why? Your, I'm not a codependent. It's impressive just... <laughs> if you hear the number. Okay. Um, okay, so we're gonna do the same thing. Just line up the flat edge of your crystals and then when you brace it, just pull straight down and then kind of push through the frame like that. And then we're gonna go back through one more time. And then we're gonna pull the next crystal. Yeah, it might actually look really cool if you just dump all the colored ones out and mix it up. I wonder what that would look like. Um, okay. So uh, the spacing is not super crazy. I mean, you can always scoot things around. So I just kind of let things kind of go. Sorry, I don't know if I'm focused. So. 26 out of 26. Wow, 26 different shades of color. Ooh. Yeah, I would say that Quat classifies as having a problem. <laughs> <laughs> I have a problem. Um, okay, so we How many are different mapping. designs? How which this is like your 10th design of this rain cloud, right? About, Oopsie. Not Sorry. this particular one, but I mean we you had lots of different rain clouds on country designs, right? Yeah, this is actually I really like this shape. I have a main sun catcher that I've done for a couple of years now that um, sort of was upgraded after a couple of years of doing a different rain cloud shape. So I seem to like the uh, rain cloud. And it, I think I like this one actually. I really like this shape. Be interesting because sometimes it's easy to just get so zen uh, doing all the wrapping and then you're like down here and you're like, oh crap, I forgot to put on the raindrops. <laughs> Oh God, did I do the thing? I did the thing. I, was the thing. I forgot to put the raindrop. We're time travelers. I forgot to put the raindrop on, which is exactly what I warned you about. <laughs> okay, so. And then I was like, oh, I guess you're right. And I was like, that is kind of weird. Do we even <laughs> put the drop on in here somewhere? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, <laughs> so you're going to um, we see we're reached. We the, we, yeah, we reached okay, our yeah. mark. <laughs> so now you're gonna <laughs> put your first raindrop. <laughs> yeah. Nah. Okay. So when you wrap this on, you. I mean, I guess it's chain, so you could like wrap it really tight and it would still dangle fine. Well, let's True. just keep it easy um, for you guys, like it, make it less complicated. So um, just to keep the spacing of our next crystal not so far away, I'm just gonna put my nail to stop the side of the coils and then I'm gonna push them together. So that way it still uh, connects, has the chain dangling, but our, the spacing of our next crystal won't be so far away. Okay, so if your raindrops end up at a slightly different position than your marks, that's okay too. And then you can always adjust by scooting things around if you need to. So maybe we can scoot a little. Scoot, scoot, scoot. Oopsie. All right, so uh, we're gonna just continue along here. So I really love the gradients, but I think, I don't know if we cut that out, but as we said earlier, you actually don't have to keep your beads in the strand and follow this color scheme. If you wanted to just, if you're just really go with the flow type, you can just dump them all out and pick them out randomly. See what happens. Actually, I would love to see a picture of that. If, if one of you guys- Is daring enough. Yes, if you do that, uh, send us a picture. I wanna see what it looks like, cause I'm actually really curious. I think it would be really pretty. It would be like mosaic style or something. Or so it looks like our next drop is kind of right there. So I think we have room for another crystal. So what if they kept a few crystals for themselves and made earrings out of them? Would that be okay? You could do that. Uh, we can, you know, these techniques we're teaching you, how to make links and little head pins, you can make earrings out of, if you end up having this spaced out to where you have some extra beads, 
You could save the beads. Do copper ear wires turn your earlobes green? They do. Wow. So that's a bummer. But um, you can buy some aluminum wire. And uh, aluminum, I think, is mostly non-allergenic. Hmm. Hypo, or I don't know about that. But, um, so here's the marker for our Michael's next. Michael's has like earring, like, like ho Raindrop. hooks and stuff like that, right? Yes, so, they do. Ear hooks. All right. Oop. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Um, so we are going to wrap this tight. So just hold your chain and the frame together with your finger and just pull straight up and through the frame and then come back around. And I'm going to wrap this really close there, if you can see. And if it's not close, you could do that thing where you use your nail to stop this and then use your other nail and just push them together. And then that way, when we put our next crystal, it's not so far away. I remember when we were, we were doing shows in Arizona a lot with your mom, and uh, and uh, we were like, in Arizona they don't get any rain, but they get lots of sun. So, but I think if you're in Arizona, you probably want some rain. So let's make a rain sun catcher, like a rain cloud. Wow, I don't even remember. You don't remember that? <laughs> and then uh, and so what you did, and first we used quartz crystal, and then you said, I think I'm gonna put in some glass because the glass just sparkles a little better. And now we make almost all of our sun catchers out of Swarovski and Czech glass. Yeah, Czech Which crystal actually. Czech, oh, Czech crystal, my bad. Yeah, yeah Czech, um, the Czech Republic is, that whole area, as Micah has told me, is uh, just has worked with glass yeah. for a really long time. So Czech, there's Czech crystal and then also Czech glass, uh, which is just regular glass. Their crystal is a lot more sparkly. Did I do the thing? Should we skip it? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> no, I didn't. Okay. okay. But I do need to move this over. It looks like. Yeah, Bavaria is in Czech is in the is in the Czech Republic. Republic. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. But Swarovski is in Austria. Yeah. Which so is kind of kind of close, but it's kind of like San San Francisco and L.A. close, or maybe even further than that. I just always consider Europe as just one area. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, you know, that area of the world, just all of Europe. Okay, so we're coming up on our marker there, uh, and we're gonna. We're gonna stay mindful because okay. I always forget. I'll just like be listening to a podcast and I'm like, no! Okay, so we're gonna take our third raindrop. And just thread that first link through. I wonder if I can find a picture of our booth. We were doing leather wrap bracelets back then and we had a few sun catchers here and there. Yeah, that would be cool. And then, uh, 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 what is it? Flashback Friday, Throwback yeah. Thursday. Throwback Thursday. Travel TBT. through time, yeah. Um, so I'm going to scooch these again. So I'm going to hold my nail here. I'm going to use my other nail. Press it together like a accordion or a slinky. Uh, <laughs> uh, did I just say a accordion? Ugh. A accordion. An accordion. <laughs> and slinky. Uh, and, no. <laughs> a slinky and accordion. Cool. That looks good so far. <laughs> Did you know that uh, Gumby had another doll, another pet named, uh, there was another one, there was... Yeah, there was like a blue thing, right? A blue blob thing? That was goo, I think. Oh. And then there was one also called, um, it was like, there was Nopey. Do you remember Nopey? <laughs> which no. is the dog. He would say, Nopey, do you want to be any... But they'd pause it, the, the, the camera would look, at the, would look at the dog for a minute, and he'd go, nope. Oh, weird. <laughs> He's like Eeyore, but he just says nope. He, I don't know. He just He's goes, just a downer. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> he was he was actually kind of happy. He was kind of like a happy, but he would just oh. say like no. Um, and then there was another one. I think it was called like oh god. There was another one that had like a like a like a pokey type name. But it was like it was like oh crap. What is it? I don't even remember. But, anyway. If there are any Gumby uh, aficionados <laughs> out there, Gumby. comment uh, just say if no you to Gumby. if just, you know. Just say no to Gumby. <laughs> If you know, uh, you know what we're talking about, we should, what character we're talking about, go ahead and comment below and tell us uh, who that is. We should see if. Uh, okay, so we're coming up with a marker here. Oh, sorry, I was saying we should put a Gumby thing on our thing, like and so Gumby says yes to beating or something, and then see if we get copy striked. I don't think we would. All right, so you're just gonna hold that chain in place and pull up. And well, we'll need more than twelve views. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, thanks for watching, guys. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to scooch these close. I haven't even, oh and... my gosh, I don't know if we've been in shot either. I didn't pay attention to that. Looks good so far. Okay. All right. 
So don't forget to be lining up the flat edge of your bicone crystals this whole time. And feel free to check in occasionally and, uh, you know, check the spacing if you care about something like that. But if you don't, just go with the flow and nope. let it come out as it may. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to line that up. And it's okay if your crystals kind of flop around. I mean, your raindrops flop around right now. We can kind of uh, adjust them in a little bit. And I have a question. Yeah. Let's say you were like me and you kind of like to maybe have um, some of the chain links the same length. Could you cut one of the links and make the chain length the same length? Oh, yeah. You could trim up. Like if you don't like this long one here, you could trim it. Oh, we're probably out of the shot on that whole thing right there. Really? Yeah, maybe. Oops. But yeah, if you want these um, to be shorter or something, like you don't like this long one. Mm -hmm. There we go. If you don't like this long one, you can uh, cut off a few links by just picking the link that you want to cut at and just cut the edge there. I can see that. Preferably so. before you put it on. That way it saves this, you yeah, I guess it's kind of late now because everyone that's making this together with us is already too late. Too late for you, my friends. Sorry. <laughs> I bet you somebody thought of it already. Yeah, maybe. Let us know in the comments if you <laughs> <laughs> if you end up modifying if you ended up modifying any of this. <laughs> okay. Like I feel like that there's got to be somebody here. out there. There's got to be somebody out there who can't who already knows how to do this, but they might just like they might just like the Here's fact that our other. like I'm not gonna buy 20 different boxes of Swarovski beads just to make one sun catcher. Yeah, if you already know how to <laughs> wire wrap, but you just don't want to invest in buying 26 different shades of crystal differentiator <laughs> in order to um, make a really crazy color gradient like that, uh, you might have still gotten our kit, which I'm really flattered and honored. Thank you. Yeah. And if you have a better better way of doing something, you should let us know. That's fun too. Comment below. <laughs> Comment below, yeah. Show yeah. us what you know. You think you know? You think you know? You think we know? We don't Show know. us what you know. Um, okay. That's so. the whole thing, though. The dialogue is important because you, that's how, if you just think you're the authority, then you never learn anything. And if, if somebody else can show you something new, that's good. Yes. I am totally self-taught. So, um, you know, I probably should have spent more time looking at tutorials and learning, but, you know, I just um, kind of figured things out. And then later, like scrolling through Instagram, I'll see like, I'll pass by a, a quick wire wrap tutorial and then I'll be like, oh my God, oh. I can't believe I've been doing it the dumbest way possible. Yeah. <laughs> so things like that happen all the time when you're self-taught and you're taking a class. I mean, wire wrapping, you don't really, there's no classes really, are there? It's not like a college, you could go to... T you know, you can take a college course for like metal smithing and silver. I don't know, but it seems stuff, like they but... teach it over there in Russia, and you know, with all like those, uh, all the all the Russian wire wrappers okay. that do that crazy wire wrap. So I have stuff. one crystal left, and it looks a little lower than the other side, which mm -hmm. is bound to happen because there's like a cutoff point right here anyway. But um, if that happens, and you care about that kind of thing, you can start scooting. Usually, when I scoot, I'll just put my nail in between each wrap here, and just uh, kind of move it. Move it down a wee bit. By the way, not, not, not to diminish what you know. I mean, we've been doing this basically. Am only. I out of shot again? Sorry, yeah. y'all. I just want to point out to everybody that you kind of tend to be a little bit self-dismissive. You know a lot of stuff, and you've figured out lots of things, and you've been continually improving now for like eight or ten years. I was at where nine years now. So I think that that counts for something, you know. And that's so that even if you even being self-taught, it's not like you went to school for it. But I think that that counts. Yeah. So true. don't so don't discount yourself. Mm, thanks. But we always improve. We always improve. Yeah. Okay. So we have move this down a beat. Cool. So a lot of times wire wrapping or just I don't know, any sort of jewelry making, you always gotta check back and you will have to make adjustments and if you ever start hammering, um, like this is a really thick piece of wire that I hammered after I shaped it. And stuff like that um, so much adjusting because the hammering distorts the metal and changes the shape and then you have to fix it Oop. okay I think that looks better I think your fingers you just need to go there right that's right in the middle of the shot cool all right last one guys look at all the progress you've made 
Good job. It's going to look so cool in the sun, especially with all these colors. Mm -hmm. Oh, thanks. So we're going to push that through there. And we are going to wrap four or five times, as I like to do. Yeah, thanks to the lockdown. Keep it close we, together. I guess for future us and everybody else, we're doing this during the, during the coronavirus lockdown in 2020. And if you order an HDMI cable for Amazon, it takes three weeks to show up. <laughs> Amazon so. Prime is now Amazon uh, Slime. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, gonna, so I, we're going to probably edit that one out. Cut, maybe. <laughs> oh. Okay. We're well. going to cut. And then you're going to tuck that nub. Be careful. Um, and uh, go ahead and press this lightly, light, light pressure, and then rotate. All right. Oh, my gosh. Look at how cute that is. I guess maybe this is actually the first one I've made for this kit. So we just made it together. Okay. So uh, the next, last but not least, we are going to attach this chain here. So let's kind of lay it down and look at the placement a little bit. Where's a good spot? And we're going to take this thin wire and just. Mm, okay, one second. Ta -da. Oh, thanks. Thanks. Yeah, so this looks like a good spot. You kind of want it to be centered. Like you don't want to put it too far over here and too far over there. I mean, you could. It'll just hang really low, I guess. <laughs> it won't have a much of a clearance. Do you do anything so, like um, hang it from your finger or something to see where the center balance is or anything like you that? You could, um, but because there's a chain, it's going to center anyway. Okay. Oh, that's yeah. a really good point. That's why I did this because the other way was too difficult. So oh. I'm going to... Um, you can, we can do that thing again where once you find a good spot where you want to create an arch in the chain that's kind of in the middle of your cloud and then line up the edges so that they are fit somewhere that makes sense, you can take your pliers and just put some scratches there. Is that why they hang pictures like that with the little, with the little wire on the back? Because that way it finds its own, you can level it that way? Maybe. I've never thought about that. That's so crazy. So we're going to start the same. So you're going to brace so this length here so and then <laughs> fold over. Always improving. Always improving. Yeah. Always <laughs> learning. <laughs> and then uh, we're going to fold that around. And we don't need that many. I'm still probably going to do four wraps. So. Kick it. Yeah, with that. There. Thank you. And then uh, we're going to do that tuck and rotate thing. We should put a picture of our setup right now because we are like two feet underneath a camera that has a tiny little LCD screen and that's what we're using to try and see if we're in the middle of the shot for the past four videos. So. Yeah, so if you ever hear me talking and then it sounds like I'm like talking in a weird position, that's because I'm looking straight up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, so you're going to hold the chain and just brace there against the frame and pull straight down and then push the wire through and wrap. And then we're just going to finish it off now and just wrap three or four more times. I'm hungry. <laughs> Here, can you look up? There you go. <laughs> With my mouth all open. Um, Actually, I think I got that zit on the side of your face. Oh, no. <laughs> I'll edit that out. Um, okay. And then now, now that we have one side on, we can hold it up like this and then see where it makes sense. It doesn't really make sense there, so we're going to keep it in our original spot, the little scratch mark. Okay, we're going to take that wire and we are going to start a new coil. So you leave a little bit of length and you're going to fold behind and then you're going to wrap it a couple times and then we're going to tuck that little edge there. And if you started yours and it's kind of far away, it's OK. We can push it together with the other one. So we're going to do that tucking thing we do with the rotating. And then just push it against the other coil. And oh, right here. So we're going to try and just pull this. Like you don't want to have your chain all twisted up when you 
are ready to attach it. So I usually just let it hang and then I will grab it between my fingers and then just pull straight. So if you see the chain is like in the same direction. And then you will thread the last link through and then we're just going to wrap. So brace the chain and then wrap, wrap, wrap. We're going to wrap three or four times. and give it a snip. I'm going to cut maybe that far. That was perfect. And then we are going to put a little bit of pressure and rotate, rotate around so there are no, this is nice and smooth. Yeah, and you have your cute little cloud. Here, let's um, zoom out here. Okay, and I'll do the I'll do the B roll over here. Are you holding it up? So we have our five raindrops. Now you know how to make head pins and terminated, you know, drops, and you know how to wire wrap. Can you hold it up over here on the side? We'll get this side with this with the phone. Do do do, down a little bit. That's good right there. Cool, jabbers. <laughs> good job, guys. Thanks for trying our kit out. Let us know, send us pictures, please. We wanna see how you did. We wanna see if you did anything different or how you laid out your raindrops. Um, if you had fun and you loved your finished work, subscribe to catch more tutorials. We're eventually going to start showing how to make the wireframes themselves and just the whole process of sun catcher making and also tips and tutorials on how to make jewelry and things like that so we make everything by hand and we always have yes and i do get lots of people uh, on pinterest uh, asking me how i make my stuff so we started this channel to kind of share the process there so and if you want to make an answer video just like a response video of you making something that's like this that's cool yeah. Um, I'm sure that we're not the only people in the world who thought of rain cloud sun catchers, although it was an original idea. It's capable to have more people having the same original idea. We're all inspired by somebody. Yeah, so comment and let us know if you want to see or know how to make anything in particular. Uh, and then uh, also please like our video. It helps us out a lot. Subscribe. We're still working on getting to rename our channel to our impossible to remember company name. Can you guys remember without <laughs> looking? <laughs> it's Marge and Binturong. So, Thank you so much, guys. Like and subscribe. The subscribe that's a small is, arrow. It's a small arrow. So you got to zoom in. This arrow, <laughs> when you hold the arrow this way, this is a, a single line character of Hunter S. Thompson. No. Okay. Nope. <laughs> Look at these. Friggin' colors. <laughs> <laughs> um, that dark one is called dark indigo, and it is so dark that it looks almost black. I can't. I can't point down because somebody needs to put some pants on. Oops. <laughs> life hack. Quarantine <laughs> life. <laughs>